Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church.
today. May we glorify you in all that we do, Father. You're worthy of our praises. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I see that you are drawing a line in the sand, and I want to be standing on your side. Oh, so let your kingdom come and let it live in me. This is my prayer. This is my plea. Father, I see you draw a line in the sand, and I want to be standing on your side. Oh, so let your kingdom come and let it live in me. This is my prayer. This is my plea. Let the worshipers rise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. I'm surrendering. Father, I hear it growing louder, the song of your redeemed, as the saints of every nation are awakening the same. So let our hearts become an anthem, oh, hear the heavens ring, this is our song, a song to our King, let the worship rise around. Let the sons and the daughters see. I surrender my own. I surrender to the King. Let the rush of praise. Sons and the daughters see. Lord, we surrender. I'm surrendering my own. I surrender to. Come on, one more time. Let the rush of us arise. surrendering my own. I 
I'm hoping this morning that right there wherever you are that you are giving him worship, you are giving him praise this morning. He is worthy of our praise today. Hallelujah. I can feel his presence in this somewhat very empty room this morning. I'm thankful today that the Bible says where two or three were gathered together and it was more than two or three here this morning. And I feel his presence this morning. I want us all, right, wherever we may be this morning to give him praise to give him worship because he has truly, truly been a good God to us this morning. Sister Kathy, can you sing that last verse for us? Let's worship him right here together, right there in your living room, right there, wherever you might be. Let's worship him. He is worthy to be praised. Come on, Sister Kathy, sing it right here. Hallelujah this morning. Let us adore him today. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. Thank you so much for attending service this morning once again via the media. We thank God for you being a part of this service this morning. If we don't do anything else today, we're going to preach, of course, but if we don't do anything else today, I want us to give him praise. I want us to give him worship. He, is, he has been so, so good uh, to each of us this morning, and he deserves our praise. Welcome this morning. God bless you today. Once again, to the team, thank them so much. Upstairs, uh, in our media side, the production side, sound guys, all these wonderful folks up here, thank them so, so very much. And if you don't mind, let them know in your comments how much you appreciate uh, what they have done over the last five or six weeks. It's hard to believe it's been five or six weeks that we've been doing this. Amen. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to get used to empty chairs, 
empty church buildings, empty parking lots. I'm not going to get used to that, but not by any means on this side. So I'm hoping that you're not getting used to that as well wherever you are. Looking forward to being back in church here in the very near future. Uh, we are beginning to see and begin to hear some, some means of uh, a hope, I guess, that we'll be getting back together here hopefully soon. Um, and we'll keep you posted as we begin to learn more about all that. But until then, let's continue to worship the Lord uh, through the means that God has given to us this morning. And we appreciate you so, so very much for being a part of this service. Well, let me just want, once again just encourage you uh, to comment on there. There again, if you don't say anything but, hey, I'm watching, or I'm from XYZ City, or I'm from XYZ State, wherever you might be from, just say something so that we'll know that you're a part of this and that you're uh, enjoying this. And I also want to once again continue to express to you how grateful, how appreciative that I am as a pastor uh, that we have had such an overwhelming, overwhelming support uh, of this uh, time during that we're doing right here. The views have been incredible. Um, the number of people that are watching and, and, and being a part of the services. But not only that, the number of people who are sharing, the way you are sharing our services and getting your friends to watch and your families to watch. Let me just once again encourage you to continue to share our services with your family and friends on Facebook. Also, they can go to our YouTube channel and watch us there. Uh, most We're just trying to get the, the good news of Jesus Christ out. And you're making that possible, and I am so gratefully appreciative of that. Also, too, don't forget to share uh, Pastor Heidi's um, devotionals and, and children's ministry and also youth ministries that she's putting out there for us as well. Don't forget to share them uh, with your uh, family and friends as well. Well, we appreciate you once again. Let's get prepared now for our morning tithe uh, and offering. Uh, there, once again, I appreciate there how you have continued to give. Even in the midst of not being in the house, you have given it, whether it be through the a cash app, whether it be through the online giving of our website, or whether it be through mailing it in. Uh, many of you have been so faithful, and for that I'm very much uh, thankful and appreciative of that as well. So continue to use those outlets whereby you can give your tithe and your offering, also to, to the building campaign. Whatever you want to, to designate it to, you can do so there, and we greatly appreciate that so very much. All right, so we're going to break here for a commercial, and then we'll be right back here getting ready for the word of the Lord this morning. So get your Bibles, get your pens, get your pads, and let's get ready for the word of the Lord this morning. We'll be right back. God bless you. A church that promotes the bond of unity among diversity. A church that serves all generations. A church that values the family. A church that lifts praises to God. A church that elevates your destiny and not your history. A church that teaches God's Word. A church that builds relationships through fellowship. A church that's excited about meeting you.
moments to let our band bless us as they continue to play a few minutes this morning. We appreciate our band so very much. We are so blessed to have them in our church and we give God praise for them. So let's just give a few moments of time and let the anointing flow through our musicians here just for a few moments. Come on guys, if you would and ladies, play it. Right here, JC. When we get into the word, place right here, JC. saxophone if we can right here a little bit on the saxophone we'll get into the word of the Lord us out all together right here, Pastor. Come on, one more time. Let's get ready for the word of the Lord. Come on, guys, play it right here. team that God has given to us here at Great Commission Ministries. I don't take any of them for granted, I tell you that, from, uh, from the folks that we don't see on the cameras to the folks that we do see on the cameras. Uh, we just thank God for them so very, very, very much. Well, if you got your Bibles this morning, <clears throat> let's look at just one verse of Scripture. That's in the book of Ephesians to uh, chapter 4, and we'll look at verse 27. Chapter 4 of Ephesians in verse 27, very, very short verse of Scripture, but very powerful. Chapter 4 of the book of Ephesians, looking at verse 27 this morning. It says, neither give place to the devil. And in verse 26 it says, be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down on your wrath, and then it says, in addition to that, neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. Father, I thank you this morning for the privilege and for the honor of being a part of what you are accomplishing. We thank you today, God, that you are moving in a most awesome, in a most powerful way. Thank you today, God, that you are taking something bad and you are bringing good out of it, God. And I thank you for that. And I praise you this morning, God, for the team of ministers that you have set in this house. God, for their gifts, their talents, and the anointing whereby they minister through. Thank you this morning, God, for blessing us with their gifts and, Lord, their willingness to use their gifts, God. Thank you this morning, God, for the people of God who have chosen to view and who have chosen to be a part of our services, Lord, through the media. 
We thank you this morning for them. And Lord, we just ask you, God, that you'd anoint your servant this morning as you have prepared me this week for this time to preach your word. I pray, God, that I would be able to release it in such a way that those who are listening would be able to understand. And those, God, today that need to be encouraged would be encouraged and instructed. Today, God, would be instructed. Holy Spirit, I fully am aware today, unless you preach through me, it's not going to be impactful. But I ask you now in the name of Jesus that you would begin to speak through me this morning. Holy Ghost, do that which I know you're able to do. Speak to your people, and we give you the praise. We ask you now, God, that all of our attentions will be drawn to you and what you're saying through your word. Not so much my preaching, but your word this morning. And we give you thanks in advance. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So let me just read that one verse of Scripture again. Neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. During this time of the COVID-19 virus that we have been confronted with and challenged by over the last, uh, probably now going on a couple of months, we have been taught rightfully so by the way we have been taught and we have been told to be on the defense to this curse do we are to be defensive we are to be on the defense to this COVID-19 virus by different ways of practicing perhaps one being social distancing that six feet apart that we're supposed to be wearing masks Staying home, only doing the things that perhaps we're, that are classified as essential. So we have been taught and we have been trained and we have been instructed by the officials on how to be on the defense. And please hear me, I'm in no way denying any of that or contradicting any of that. I want to encourage all of us to continue to be wise in regard to the virus through social distancing, stay at home as much as you possibly can, wearing the mask and just doing the things that we're being instructed to do. And uh, I think that we're definitely getting on top of this thing with God's help. But I want to come right back, though, and I want to say that even though we're being taught how to be defensive to this curse and to this enemy, that is contrary to how we as Christians are to be in regard to the devil. We're not to be people of defense. We're not to be people who are always operating on the defense in regard to the enemy. But I would say today that rather we are to be operating on the offense. We are to be offensive when it comes to the devil. Hallelujah. Not to be defensive and, and backing up in corners and being so, so cautious of him and, and all the above. But rather we are to be offensive, offensive. And I'm afraid today that if we're not careful, especially as this thing is being prolonged now and seeming to go over into our, uh, what, six or seven, eight weeks, I don't know how long it's been, time is flying by. If we're not careful, we'll find ourselves gravitating to a defensive spirit. We'll find ourselves gravitating to that type of spirit and, and operating in a defensive mindset and a defensive mode. And as we do that, folks, whenever we become defensive as Christians to the enemy, we have then opened ourselves up or we have opened our, our lives or we have made room for the enemy. In other words, we're giving him permission to go ahead and do what he's going to do in our lives. But I, I want to I not speak against the, the defensive practices of the COVID-19 by any means. I just want to break the mindset that the enemy may try to bring upon us as we're uh, being confronted with this. And I want to say today that we as people of God, we are to be offensive, not defensive when it comes to the enemy. Have, have, have you ever been to a ball game or some event perhaps like a ball game or some social gathering where, where, you, where you had to have a ticket, you purchased a ticket, for example, and, and that ticket was, Row X, Y, Z, seat X, Y, Z. That was your seat. And when you got to that section and you got to that, that row, 
and you got to that seat, there was somebody sitting in that seat. And, and, and so you look at that individual, and hopefully you were Christ-like about it, of course. Uh, you look at that individual and you say to them, ma'am, sir, uh, this, this seat is taken. And you show them the ticket, and you show them where your ticket is the seat that they're sitting in. And, and you say to them, ma'am, th this seat is taken. This seat is taken. And, and I want to I want to. Think about that just for a moment here is because as we're in this season of defense, as we're in this season of defense, if we're not uh, are careful, we will allow the enemy, we will allow the enemy to take residence in a seat that's not his. We'll allow him to take residence in a seat that is not his. We'll let him take the seat of our joy. We'll let him take the seat of our peace. We'll let him take the seat of our strength and, optimi and, and being optimistic and, and being Christ-like and all the above. We'll let him sit there. You know, a timid person when perhaps um, when they got to that row and they got to that section and they got to that seat and they would recognize that there was somebody there. That instead of them uh, taking the authority of the ticket and, and, and say it to the person, Sir, ma'am, this, this seat is taken. I'm sorry. This seat belongs to, to me. I purchased that. And today, my friend, we may not be holding a physical ticket. We not, may not be holding a physical certificate in our hands, uh, but we have a ticket. And that ticket has been paid for by Jesus Christ. And that ticket belongs to us. The blood of Jesus Christ has been applied to our lives. So what I want to preach on this morning uh, is I want us to go to where the seed is uh, that the devil has taken. Uh, and I want us to look at the devil and I want to say to him this morning, devil, this seat is taken. This seat belongs to me. Get out of my seat. This seat belongs to me. Hallelujah. Christ is. And Christ has already purchased this for me. This is not your seat. You cannot have my joy. You cannot have my peace. You cannot have my strength. You cannot have my positive outlook. You cannot have what God has given to me. This has been purchased. And this seat belongs to me, Brother George. And devil, this seat is taken. Get out of my seat. Can somebody say amen? So this morning, what I want to talk to us about is simply that. Devil, this seat is taken. This seat doesn't belong to you. I know we've been taught to be defensive here, but I want to tell the devil today, in the spirit of defense that society has put us in, we're not going to let the devil take our joy and our peace and all those things that belong to us through the purchase price of Jesus Christ in our lives. I believe this morning very likely there are some people out there that you need to look at the devil and you need to tell the devil to get out of your seat. You need to tell the devil this seat does not belong to him. This seat, is, this seat does not belong to you, devil. This is my seat. Hallelujah. And you can't have this seat. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I don't want to, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to, you know, to be ugly here, devil, but, but I paid for that seat. That, 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 I paid for that seat whenever I gave my life to Christ. That seat belongs to me, hallelujah, and I can't let you sit there. Hallelujah, you got to go today. So I want somebody today in your mind or in your spirit to tell the devil to get out of your chair, to get out of that part of your life that the enemy has taken room in and has taken possession of this morning. I want to do my very best today to, to quickly go through five, five things that I feel like are five ways or five uh, activities, if you want to say that, that we need to do in order to take our, take our seats back, to take our chairs, to take that which belongs to us back from the enemy in regard to that. So I want you to shout out loud, devil, this seat is taken. Amen. This seat is taken. The first thing I think that we need to learn how to do if we're going to take back the seats uh, that the enemy is sitting in in our life, this is a very pastoral sermon, by the way. The first activity that I think we need to do is that we need to take it back by looking. 
We need to take the seat back by looking. Now, I'm not saying looking at, looking at the devil sitting in our chair. That's in no way what I'm saying. I believe that's what a lot of folks perhaps will do if we're not careful. In times like this, we'll walk up to the gentleman or to the lady in, the, in, the, in our seat, and we'll just kind of look at them and say, oh, well, somebody got my seat. I guess I'm going to have to go back and sit up in the new nosebleed section, or, or I'm going to have to go stand at the back door and just go ahead and let them sit there. That's not what I'm talking about. When I'm saying that we're going to take the seat back, I'm not sitting, I'm not talking about just standing there looking at, looking at the devil sitting in your seat. No, what I'm talking about is looking to the person who can help us. Amen? Look into the person who can help us. Now, if that person don't want to respond whenever you show them the ticket, which is very similar to how the enemy's probably going to work here, the devil's not just going to pop up. The devil probably is not just going to get up out of that seat just because uh, you're looking at him or you wish he would get up. No, you have to sometimes, you have to many times go to the people in the arena who has the authority and let them come help you take care of the enemy. Am I making any sense? So we got to look, we got to look to the authority. And who is the authority? The authority is Jesus Christ. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So how are we going to take that seat back from the devil? Hallelujah. We're going to look to Jesus. We're going to look to Jesus. Now this reminds me of a story in the Bible where at the wedding of Cana, you, you remember that story, how they ran out of uh, wine and, and the, the Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus, um, you know, went to Jesus and began to ask for his help. And you know the story there. But I want to make this point here in that. Now it's just like the devil. It's just like the devil. Here a wedding celebration is going on. I mean great activity is happening Great things are happening in our life, and that's just like what was happening. The economy was on a, I mean, a, a, perhaps the greatest economy we've had in years and years and years prior to the devil. And, and, and there were a lot of things just were good were going on in our people's lives and people's lives. And, 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 and watch here. Here the devil come plop down in our seat. Amen. And he is trying to take people's joy. He's trying to take their happiness. He's trying to take their peace. Uh, and, and, and that's just like him. But look, what, look at what Mary did. As soon as the devil showed up and tried to interrupt the, the wedding and, and, and caused the water, I mean the, the wine to run out, what did she do? The first thing that she did was she went and she looked to Jesus. She immediately went and looked to Jesus. So what I want to encourage us today to do, hallelujah, and when she looked to him, uh, he brought her some help. He brought her some relief, and he got wine back in the wedding. And I'm here to tell you today that Jesus has the ability. If we will just look to him, if we will turn to him, uh, you ain't got to keep fighting with the devil and keep no, just look to Jesus, hallelujah. Submit yourself to him. Then rebuke the devil. Don't try to rebuke the devil until you have looked to Jesus, hallelujah. When you look to him, uh, the authority of God will step in uh, and enable you to tell that devil, get out of my chair. Look to Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, when, when Jesus told the church of Laodicea in, in Revelation chapter 3, when he told them this, he said in, in Revelation 3 and verse 18, Anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. That thou mayest see. Hallelujah. That's my prayer today. That's my prayer for myself and my prayer for you today is that we would allow the Holy Spirit of God to anoint our eyes with eye salve that we may see who? That we may see him. That we may see him, God Almighty, hallelujah, sitting on the throne in authority. Let's stop looking at the devil in our chair, but let's look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And he will help bring the wine back into our lives. He'll help bring the excitement back into our lives. He'll help bring that spirit back into our lives again. But we got to look unto him. Lord, anoint our eyes that we may ascend. See clearly this morning. Hallelujah. I'm encouraged today as David instructs us. What did he say in Psalms 121? He says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. Why? 
Why are we looking unto the hills? Why are we looking unto God? Why are we looking unto Jesus? Why? Because that's where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So look unto Jesus. Quit trying to fight defensively. Quit trying to be backed into a corner. Quit trying to allow the devil to take your chair. Tell the devil, this seat is not yours. Tell him to get out of that seat and allow God to help you take your place back in your seat this morning. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar, but we cannot do this by ourselves. We got to look unto Jesus. For God is our refuge, according to Psalms 46. He is our refuge and he is our strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. If he's where our help is going to come from, then we need to be looking to him. Amen. If you know that Johnny or Sally can help you, then that's who you need to be looking to. Don't be looking to Bobby. If Bobby can't help you, go to who can help you. And the Bible says that God can help us. So that's who we need to be looking to. I want you to write this down in your notes. Uh, that's a quote that I wrote down uh, that the Lord dropped into my heart. Change your focus and you will change your finish. Change your focus and you will change your finish. In other words, my friend, if we'll change our focus, we'll change how we finish. Because you will finish what you focus on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you keep focusing on the devil sitting in your chair, and you keep focusing on all the things that we're seeing and hearing and all the, all the negative doom and gloom, then that's where we're going to be. But if you change your focus and look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, and where our very present help in a time of trouble is, uh, he will help us finish differently than perhaps we have started. Hallelujah. Stop looking at the crisis. I know it's hard, but I'm being honest with you. Stop looking at the crisis and start looking at Christ. Hallelujah. Stop looking at the giants and start looking to God. Hallelujah. Stop looking at the problem and start looking at his promises. I'm going to say that again. Stop looking at the crisis and start looking to Christ. Stop looking at how big the giants are and start looking to God. Stop looking at all the problems and start looking at his promises. God is able to help us take that seat that belongs to us in the first place. Hallelujah. I want you to pay attention now to Jesus' words in Luke chapter 11. In verse 34 through verse 36, listen now, listen here. It says, the light of the body is the eye. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, the whole body is full of light. Hallelujah, this is powerful. But when thy eye is evil, the body is full of darkness. Did you hear that? Hallelujah, it's full of darkness. Take heed, take heed. Therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. And if thy whole body therefore be full of light, having no part of darkness, the whole shall be of light. As when the bright shining of a candle does give thee light. What is he saying there? Hallelujah, we got to change what we're looking at. Hallelujah, many of us are living in darkness right now. We live it in despondency. We live it in discouragement. We live it in despair. We live it in doom and gloom. We allow the devil to take our seats in life. Why? Because of what we're looking at. We're looking at the wrong people. We're looking at the wrong thing today. Look unto Jesus. Hallelujah. So if we're going to take that seat back, we're going to start looking, looking differently. Looking to Jesus and not who's in our seat. The next thing, if we're going to do it, it's not only going to come by looking, it's going to come from listening. It's going to come from listening. The seven churches that Jesus addressed in Revelation chapter 3, chapter 2 and verse 3, every one of the churches, Brother Billy, that Jesus addressed, every one of them, he said the same, and he repeated the same words to all seven churches. What were these words? He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Hallelujah. So not only are we to be looking unto Jesus, but we are to be listening. 
to be listening to what Jesus said. Now, let's go back to the story at the wedding of Cana. I want to use that to connect some dots here this morning. So, so watch here. So Mary looked to Jesus at the wedding of Cana, right? So, so she looked to him because she knew that he had the authority and he had the ability to help the situation. So he looked, she looked to him. Now watch here. So Jesus responded. So Jesus responded, hallelujah, by giving them instructions. Now listen to what Mary said. Mary, after, G, after Mary confronted Jesus and said, this is what's going on, hallelujah. Now listen to what Mary said to the servants. Mary said to the servants in John 2 and verse 5, she said to the servants, whatsoever he says, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Hallelujah. Listen to that. Mary, first of all, she went and began to look to Jesus. We got to look to Jesus. We can't be focusing on the fact that there's no wine uh, and there's no, you know, there's no things going on right now. No, she didn't focus on that. She went to where her help was, and her help was Jesus. Hallelujah. And then he began to speak. And Mary said to the servants now, pay attention, pay attention and listen to what he says. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is it important to listen to him? Because he has the instructions for the solution. He has the solution. Hallelujah. So we need to be listening to him. Now, folks, don't, don't get mad when I say this. Please don't get mad when I say this. But stop listening to the media and start listening to the master. Stop listening to the media. And start listening to the master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our faith. Reason why is that important? Why is it important? I'm not saying we shouldn't be informed. I'm not, I'm not saying any of those things. But oh, I'm just telling you, it just amazes me of, 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 of Christians that I'm seeing. And all that they're focusing on is is the negative and the doom and gloom. And they post in this video. They post in this ad. And they say in this and they say in that. Oh, oh, come on. Hallelujah. What are you looking to? Who are you looking to? What are you listening to? What are you listening to? Hallelujah. You cannot keep listening to the doom and gloom in the media and expect to get your seat back. Hallelujah. you got to look and listen to the master. He will help us. He'll help us. Hallelujah. Why is it so important that we listen to him and not everybody else? This has popped in my mind. We need to listen more to him than we do them. Amen? Why is that so important? Why would I bring this point out? Because why? Our faith is impacted by what we listen to. Our faith is impacted by what we listen to. We walk not by sight. <laughs> Our faith, we, we can't walk by sight. we got to walk by faith cometh by hearing. And, and what the Bible says in Romans 10 and verse 7, faith cometh by hearing and hearing what? Hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. So we got to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our help. He is our help in a very present time of trouble. we got to stop looking at this situation and looking at the devil sitting there. And we got to go to the authority. we got to go to, to Christ uh, and look to him. And then as we begin to go to him, as Mary did, uh, Jesus is going to begin to talk. Uh, Jesus is going to begin to fill our minds uh, and fill our hearts because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Mm, hallelujah. So we're not going to move the devil out by, by what we're listening to of the media. We're not going to move him out of our seat by all the doom and gloom. It's going to come by faith. And faith cometh by the hearing of the word of the Lord. So the devil's saying to many people, he's saying to many people, well, life's never going to be the same. You ever heard that? I've even heard people say, I don't think we'll ever go back to normality. Come on, folks. I know, I, I know what you're saying. And I know it's easy to let those words come out of our mouth. Come on. Don't say that. 
Because all things are possible with God. Hallelujah. And, and, you know, so the devil's filling us with all this stuff. But the, the, the big thing is this, is that, you know, because of the defense, the social gathering, and the social distancing, and the mask, and, and all those things, and please keep doing those. You hear me? Please keep doing those things. Uh, I'm in no way saying stop that. But what is he saying that as, as, as the media is telling us all these things, what's going to happen? The devil is taking that, and he's feeding us what? Is that we're going to catch this virus, and we're going to die. We're going to catch this virus, and we're going to die. We're going to have family members who are going to catch this and we're going to die. It's death, death, death. You hear what I'm saying? But faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. So when the enemy is saying that and he is taking residence in our chair, we then begin to declare Psalms 91. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome and pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers up under his wings. I will trust. His truth shall be my shield. His truth shall be my buckler. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the hour that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor the destruction that waste at noontime. A thousand shall fall at my right hand and ten thousand at my left hand, uh, but it shall not come nigh unto you. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh me and my dwelling. Folks, do you hear that? Do you hear that? That's what I'm trying to get us to hear in many other great passages from the Word of the Lord. If we don't hear that, if we don't, Brother Billy, if we don't listen to that, then the devil's going to stay right there and keep his seat. And we're going to have to stand back at the back of the arena or maybe even go home. Sad. But no, you've got to listen to what the Bible says. Listen to the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we've got to look unto Jesus and we've got to listen the devil was speaking all kind of negative things about, about our marriages, about our finances, and about our jobs, and our retirement, and, and, and all in our churches. I mean, he has just filled uh, the airways with negative. Uh, hallelujah, what is he doing? Uh, he's sitting in our chair. He's sitting there, and he's saying, nanny, nanny, boo, boo. Uh, hallelujah, I'm going to destroy your retirement. I'm going to destroy your, your future. I'm going to destroy destroy your churches. Uh, I'm going to destroy your joy. It's never going to be the same. Uh, it's never going to be like it used to be. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar because that's not what God says. Uh, hallelujah. And my faith is not built upon what the media is saying. My faith is not built upon what man is saying. My faith is built upon the Word of God. Hallelujah. And I build my life on this rock and the gates of hell shall not I prevail against it. Hallelujah. When Jesus was confronted by the devil in the wilderness, he said these three words, and you know it. Jesus said what? It is written. It is written. Folks, we got to stop looking to the wrong people, to the wrong sources, and we got to start looking to God. We got to stop listening to all the things that we're listening to, and we got to start listening to the Word of God. Let the Word of God direct our day. Let the Word of God lead us and guide us. Hallelujah. Don't allow the enemy to uh, let all these things on the outside keep our chair. So if we're going to take our chair back, and I'm trying to hurry, we got to, we got to do it by looking we got to do it by listening, and we got to do it by leaning. we got to do it by leaning. Proverbs 3 and verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And what else did he say? And lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. So when I'm saying leaning here, I'm saying today we, can, we cannot get our seat back by leaning on our own understanding. We gotta lean on who? We gotta lean on him. We gotta put our trust in what he has said. We gotta put our trust in the word of God. Hallelujah. 
That's what I'm saying today is that we got to look to him. We think to have an ear to hear what he begins to say. We got to listen, as Mary says, to what he says. But now she didn't just say listen. She said to the servants, I want you to listen. I want you to listen to what Jesus says. Because when you hear what he says, what? Then I want you to do it. Doing it is leaning. Doing what he says is trusting him. Leaning not on your own understanding. My own understanding during that time is the wedding is destroyed. The wedding is never going to be the same. It's, it's, it's just destroyed. You understand what I'm saying? So, so and, and my own understanding says, well, this can't be corrected. The, the wine has run out. There's no way now. There's no way it can be saved. We're never going to be able to go back. That's our own understanding. But leaning on what he says Hallelujah, is to begin to obey uh, what he says, is to do what he says. Hallelujah. So we have to start leaning. Let me just give you a couple of things and I'm moving along. Leaning is not worrying. Boy, and I confess to you, you're looking at me right here through the, through the screen, through the, through the media. There's times in my life, I'm not proud to tell you, but there's times in my life that I don't lean that well. I worry. I worry more than I lean on him. But whether it's me or whether it's you, leaning is not worrying. Leaning is not fearing. Leaning is not panicking. Leading is not doubting. Leading is not living depressed. Leading is not accepting this idea that the best is behind us. Leading is not talking all, all the negative talk. Leading is not hanging our harps on the willow tree and refuse to have a song to sing anymore. Hallelujah. What, what is leaning? Leaning is hearing what he has said. And then believing what he says and doing it. What has he said? He says that God, with man it may be impossible, but with God what all things are possible. So folks, if we're going to get our seats back, we're going to do it through looking, listening, and leaning. What are you leaning on right now? Are you leaning on the reports that we don't even know are accurate? Are you leaning on something that somebody on a news station said? Or are you leaning on, thus says the word of God. This is not going to fade away, folks. There's no lies in this book. Hallelujah. So I'm challenging myself. Looking and learning, looking and listening and leaning. And then, number four, if we're going to get the devil to get out of our seat and let's take our rightful seats back, it's going to have to come through lauding. And don't get lost in that word. Lauding simply means to extol or to praise, to sing praises. Whenever I'm lauding, I am extolling, I'm praising, I'm, I'm singing praises. So, so praise, I know we've already talked about this here three or four weeks ago, but I want to bring it back to our attention. Uh, Sister Val, if, if we're going to take the devil out of our seat, we're not going to take him out of our seat by complaining. We're not going to take him out of our seat by all the negative talk. We're not going to take him out of our seat by, by the woe is me spirit. But we're going to take him out of our seat by looking, by listening, by, by learning, by, by leaning, and by lauding, by praising. By praising, praising who? Not praising the devil, not praising doctors, not praising a politician, not praising, no, praising God. Praising God, hallelujah. The, the devil will run out of that seat when you, begin to, when you begin to give God some lauding or you begin to give God some praise. Oh, I can give you many examples. Paul and Silas was locked up in prison. 
Paul and Silas was, was captivated by the enemy. They were locked up. And if you're not careful, you allow the enemy to lock you up. But they're at the midnight hour. They're at the midnight hour. What did Paul and Silas do? Hallelujah. He began to pray. Or they begin to pray, and they begin to give God praise. And as they begin to laud, as they begin to cry out, begin to look to Jesus, hallelujah, they begin to laud him. They begin to extol him. They begin to sing praises to him. Hallelujah, the jail cell opened, and they came out victorious. Hallelujah, King Jehoshaphat, before he sent the army out to battle. You know that story I preached several weeks ago. He did what? He sent some praisers in the front of the army. Why? Because praise will cause the enemy to scatter. Hallelujah. When the walls of Jericho come tumbling down after the trumpet began to sound on the last round, they begin to shout. Hallelujah. And as they begin to shout, the Bible says, and the walls fell down flat. So we need to laud him. So right there in your place, wherever you might be, I want you to laud him. You may have never heard that word, but I want you to laud him. I want you to extol him. I want you to praise him. I want you to sing praises unto him. Right here among us, right here, can we give God some praise? Can we raise our hands? Can we open up our mouth? Can we clap our hands? Let's cause the enemy to be scattered. Hallelujah. That is my seat. Devil, this seat is taken. Hallelujah. So we do it by lauding, giving him praise. Hallelujah. Now, folks, let's be honest. There's sometimes we don't feel like praising. I know I'm that way. Sometimes I just feel so down or I feel overwhelmed with the negative. Sometimes my praise just doesn't seem to want to come out. Well, let me give you some instructions when those times come. When you can't, get somebody who can. That's called perhaps some singing. Put you on a CD, turn it to a station or whatever. Then don't turn it to a news station. Turn it to a praise and worship channel. Amen. Don't put in a CD that will talk about the woe is me and, and the red cup and all of that. No, no, no. I want you to put in a CD. When you can't praise, let somebody praise for you. Hallelujah. Just begin to fill that car with praise. Begin to fill that house with praise. Put the earbuds in your ear when you're walking and let somebody else praise the Lord. And as you are in an atmosphere of praise, as you are around people who are praising, then you'll find yourself, you'll begin to sing. You'll begin to hum. Hallelujah. And as you begin to long, the devil will come out of that seat and you take your rightful place again. Hallelujah, and I'm finished. Look, listen, lean, laud. And this is perhaps not going to be a, quote, spiritual one, but it's biblical. We're going to take our seat back. We're going to take it back through some laughing. Some laughing. Now, some of you haven't laughed in however long this thing's been going on. Amen. I can tell. I can tell by your Facebook post you ain't laughing. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I'd hate to be in the house where you are. Hallelujah. I'd be so depressed. I'd be so discouraged. Hallelujah. I can just listen to your Facebook post and know you are one whip puppy. Hallelujah. Then that's not being critical there. That's not being uh, demeaning by any means. I'm just trying to shake you out of that. Hallelujah. Come on. Get something that's going to make you laugh. Why? Why? Because the Bible says uh, in what? In Proverbs 17 and verse 22, a merry heart do as good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Uh, you say, well, I, I just ain't a funny person. But get around somebody funny. Find something to laugh at. Find something to chuckle at. Folks, it's kind of hard to frown 
and laugh at the same time. It really is. Have you ever tried to do that? I think it's almost impossible if it's not impossible. Laugh. I told Pastor Curtis before service, I said, Pastor Curtis, you know, I've been trying to make our Wednesday nights a little bit different, a little bit, uh, uh, hopefully a little bit different and interesting there. And we've been doing some round tables and various things like that. And I told Pastor Curtis, I said, Pastor Curtis, I think I got an idea for a Wednesday night service coming up. He said, I, I, I said, I think I would like for you to take the whole Wednesday night service and just do TikTok. Now, I don't know nothing about TikTok, but I know there's some funny stuff that people are putting out. Amen. I know there's probably some bad stuff out there, so don't hold me accountable for that. But I'm saying today is that there's some crazy, funny things going on out there. Hallelujah. Some of these videos that people have made of masks. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. That'll make you laugh. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Some of Sister Candy and Sister Val stuff on there, I don't know where they get such craziness from. Hallelujah. But I look at it because why? Because it makes me laugh. It makes me see something that is different than all the doom and gloom. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Find you somebody that can make you laugh. Just call Isaac Ford. He'll make you laugh. Hallelujah. He, he has a laughter ability about him. That joker will start laughing, and when he starts laughing, he'll laugh so hard till he cries. Hallelujah. Then he'll make me laugh, and then I start crying. Hallelujah. There's something about laughter. So how are we going to get, going to get the devil out of our seat? We're going to do it by looking unto Jesus. We're going to do it by listening to what he says. We're going to do it by leaning on him. And we're going to do it by lauding him. And we're going to laugh in the presence of the devil. So look at the seat. It's your choice. It's my choice. Are you going to let the devil take your seat and have the best view of life or are you going to take the authority of the ticket that you hold that's been checked in red and tell the devil devil don't even apologize to him the devil this seat's taken it belongs to me. And you sit back down and enjoy your life and be who God's called you to be. Amen. Would you bow your heads for me this morning as the band is playing? I'm, I'm going to go back. I'm going to sit down. I want to pray. And the seat that the devil has taken and I declare over your life today if you're saved you take back the seat that belongs to you if you're not saved this morning if you're not saved this morning look to Jesus look to him look to him he's your authority look to him this morning if you're not saved this morning or maybe you drifted back away from the Lord just call out to him Say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I, I fully am aware today that without you, I'm not going to get through this. I need you, Lord. Would you save me? God, I give you my life back today. I've allowed myself to drift away. I've allowed myself to be taken down. But today I come back to you and I say, Lord, forgive me. I know that you're Jesus Christ. I know that you were crucified. I know they put you in the grave. And I also say today that you rose again on the third day. And you're sitting at the right hand of the Father right now and you're interceding on my behalf. So Jesus, I come to you right now. I need you to save me. I want you to forgive me. Here I am, Lord. For those of us who are already saved today, we need to look to him. We need to listen to what he says, the word of God. Listen to the word of God. We need to lean on him. Lean on him this morning. Give him long, give him extol, give him praise today. And laugh. Get around some laughter. This seat belongs to you, not the devil. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you today 
for what you are teaching us and what you have instructed us today. And I pray today, Lord, that we would not live a life of defense when it comes to the enemy. That we would not give heed and give room to the devil, as the verse said. That we would not allow him just to sit in the places that doesn't belong to him in our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak now across the airways to the people of God that have allowed the enemy to take their seat. I pray right now that you would give them that boldness and that authority to look to you and listen to you and lean on you and laud you and laugh. For that one, those two, those ten that's not saved this morning, God, give them the courage right now to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I want you to save me. I want you to forgive me of my sins. For that one today or those 50 today that may have drifted away, five, however it might be this morning, God, that has drifted away from you, God, let them come back home today and say to you, Daddy, I'm, I, I want to come back home. Daddy, I, I, I don't, I don't want to stay out here no longer without you. I come to you this morning, God. Lord, I thank you this morning for what you're doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Devil, this seat is taken. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. As they begin to sing this song very softly, right there in your comments, if you've, if you've given your life to Christ, if you've said that prayer and you've surrendered your life to him I want you to come in in there say pastor I just gave my life to Jesus or maybe you have allowed the enemy to pull you aside and you now have surrendered your life back to him I want you to put in the comments say pastor I just rededicated my life to the Lord or maybe maybe those two doesn't apply to you and you just want to put in the comments there that I'm taking my seat back from the devil. I'm taking my seat back from the devil. Say that in the comments. Go ahead and declare that. Go ahead and let it come out of your mouth. Devil, this seat is taken. Say that this morning in those comments. Mold your life through the words that you speak. In the name of Jesus, come on, just sing it right here. Hallelujah. Come on. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you glory. Hallelujah. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. this morning be offensive don't be defensive hallelujah thank you lord you are worthy to be praised thank you lord hallelujah thank you so much this morning for participating and being a part of this service once again, thank you for all the support. Let me strongly encourage you right now, as soon as you finish watching, turn right back around and share this. Share this with your family and friends and encourage them to take their seat back from the enemy. Would you put your hands in the air right there in your room, right there in your house? Let me declare the priestly blessing over you this morning. The Lord says, I'll bless you. The Lord says, I'll keep you and I'll let my face shine down upon you and I'll give you grace. And my countenance shall become your countenance. 
and my peace shall become your peace. Father, I thank you this morning for the word of God, for the praises of God, for the people of God. Holy Spirit, we ask you now that you will continue to guide and lead us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. We love you so very much. Thank you for attending the service today. We'll see you back on Wednesday night. Please begin to share this video, if you would, to your family and friends. We love you. God bless you. Come on, just send us out, team. Send us out. Hallelujah.